Hey guys, Desolid Magic here, and the magic news is getting absolutely mental this week. And it's only Wednesday. First up, have you been to Hasbro Pulse lately? Me neither. But if you did, you'd see these secret lair Lilist Walkers. Very first thing in the description, estimated ship date subject to change. Yeah, would you order some from them? Yeah, cross your fingers. Welcome to 1999. Four to six weeks to deliver. Who knows? So you get five for 150. Oh, I'm sorry. You wanted to buy them separately? Screw you. Okay, I hate them, except Karn looks freaking amazing. Here's the problem, though. These aren't just, I'd say, pop final knockoffs, but higher quality versions of pop finals. Oh, no. They're scratch-off lottery tickets for kids, because 1 in 20 shot of getting them in gold! Oh boy, you can get them gold-plated! Well, do you get any magic cards with it at least? Hell no! You get what they're calling exclusive lenticular cards. I think that means like, you know, like a million years ago, if you're my age, when you used to go to like Chuck E. Cheese and trade in your paper tickets for like some cool ruler that like for some reason is like seven inches instead of 12, but uh, you can move it back and forth and it makes the little things move. I think that's what they mean. But the second dictionary definition of the word lenticular is biconvex. In other words, curved, curled, <laughs> a curled card. So do you think they're, they're giving you one where the art kind of moves when you move the card left and, and right, or are they giving you a curled piece of crap? Huh? Based on Hasbro's history, which one would you guess? So pick up some today for your kids if you want to get them hooked on gambling early. Guys, it's not a loot box. It's a surprise mechanic. Surprise is not worth your money. What the hell? Next up, what is this? Remember dungeon cards? Well, they're coming back and uh, he chonk. So this was, I guess, announced. I want to say leaked, uh, but it's on the WPN page that they let people public access without logging in. And this is for an event, uh, May 17th through the 19th to celebrate um, the 50th anniversary of something, I think D&D, which I guess they're also celebrating by ruining D&D. Now, stores are getting one entire box of collector's boosters for Commander Legends Battles, uh, Battle for Baldur's Gate. That's, like, kind of cool. Oh, that's why they didn't ban the ring yet. Just figured that one out. Anyway, but also the store will receive four of these in eight and a half by 11. So big old cards. People are saying it's an oversized card. No, no, no. Oversized is a specific size. This is gigantic. This is like display sized. But uh, they say, quote, to support four tables of commander players, to which I would add, yeah, that's probably all that's showing up. Now, this is kind of wild. Uh, if your store runs it the way that they want them to, it will go as follows. As the event begins, you'll distribute three Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate draft boosters, which which I think they have to, like, buy those? Is that, like, part of the kit to run this or something? I don't really know how this works anymore, but... Okay, so they get three of those draft boosters and then one collector's booster from the free pool, I assume. Uh, then they'll open the collector's booster first. Its contents will be part of their final card pool. Then they'll draft the remaining three packs, picking two cards at a time. Uh, the double draft, that actually does work. People thought it wouldn't work when they uh, announced they were trying it. It actually does. So um, once they build their 60 card decks, uh, send them to battle in pods of four. So multiplayer 60 card Baldur's Gate. With giant dungeons. Now, how does the dungeon come into play? Well, once players are ready to begin, have each player choose a venture marker of some kind to represent themselves for the duration of the game. So you're all, like, in the dungeon together. Then, when players are directed to venture into the dungeon, they'll begin moving through Baldur's Gate Wilderness, which is, you know, the name of the dungeon, uh, the oversized dungeon card you'll have on each table. All players may also venture into this dungeon the first time they cast their commander during the game. So I think what they meant to say was that, like, on turn zero, you all land in Crash Landing. Then whenever you cast your commander, you venture. Or whenever the card says venture, obviously. I'll be honest with you. This sounds like the coolest damn thing I've ever heard of in my life. Probably because it sounds fair and fun, sort of unserious, wacky, community-oriented, and as far away from structured, constructed formats as possible. Wow, good job, wizards. You made a thing that's as far away from your products as possible, and I like it. That, uh, that says all kinds of things. 
Next up, the first two chapters of the Thunder Junction story are out, and people are reacting. I haven't read it, but the number one thing people are posting about that I saw, as far as just, like, popularity and discussion volume, was, uh... If this was an unoccupied plane, literally nobody was on this plane until the omen paths uh, that were created during the whole, you know... The Phyrexian unmending desparkification event. The omen paths opened up, and now people are flooding in there... How then is there already something there? How is there a vault? How is there anything built? No, it, it, it's less like, oh, wow, breaking logic and more like people speculating about, um, you know, what's in it and who built it. And this is just the typical video game trope of like, oh, the ancients, oh, the, the people who died out, oh, the aliens from 10 million years ago, which it's a little tired, but I still think it's interesting almost no matter what. I mean, if you're already knocking off Borderlands, you might as well go full, you know, lore copy pasta. But somebody else brought up an even better point. Remember what happened on Capenna? There was some kind of attack and then everybody had to retreat into the city. Why the hell is Thunder Junction not just outside the city of Capenna? How much more sense would that have made? Where, where, like, there's all this loot and left-behind stuff from the people who used to live there, and it's kind of, like, high-tech but low-tech, and then it would be, like, way out in a different biome with different uh, weather. And, like, it would have been so smart to do that. It did not need to be its own plane, and it makes no sense. In fact, I think some of the characters are from Cabana in this set. It actually makes a negative amount of sense that, that it, Thunder Junction is not in Cabana, just, like, on the other side of the planet or whatever. I think it was finally revealed and confirmed. I know this is theorized, but I think it was confirmed that it was the Phyrexians that drove everybody into the Capenna city. And the rest of the plane used to be populated like this. It's even around the same time period. It's like 50 years off in U.S. history. Like, what the actual hell? Why didn't they think of this? Too busy bitching about Trump on Twitter, I guess. Uh, another big story, uh, somebody named King Supernova posted, don't go to TCG Con, they owe upwards of $10,000 plus to players, cosplayers, and judges from Houston in February. Oh, that's not good. That is Glasgow Willy Wonka levels of not paying your people, okay? You don't just not pay the judges, not play the cosplay, or not pay the cosplayers, not pay anyone, okay? I, I get it. The cons aren't doing very well. TCGs aren't really doing that well lately after COVID. But, like, damn, take out a loan or something. Find private financing. Don't even throw the con unless you have the money. Don't promise money you don't have. I mean... I get it. You you pay the stuff with the with the fees. It's not my first rodeo. I, I've done event planning, but uh, if it's looking grim, have some kind of out. Have some kind of agreement. Tell them ahead of time. I mean, this is really bad. So this originally comes from outside the asylum dot blog, and uh, you know who knows if they're telling the truth. Just saying, but you know it'd be a weird thing to make up. Maybe they just got a chip on their shoulder. Just you know, great assault. Just saying. But uh, I'm going to read just their summary. Go check out the rest if you want to see all the details and all that. So their summary is TCG Con frequently does not pay out its advertised prizes and staff compensation. They currently owe upwards of 10 k to players, cosplayers, and staff members from previous events. Most attempts to contact them about this are ignored or met with excuses. I would strongly recommend not purchasing a ticket to their future events, trying to get a refund if you already have, and warning anyone you know away from them as well. If you're owed money yourself, see the end of this page for information on next steps so they've run about 10 to 15 conventions so they're not like new to it but they kind of are and the person blowing the lid on this is uh, one of the judges uh, for one of the magic areas at it at this year's and last year's Houston events and Indianapolis I'll warn you they do post some receipts you know I could photoshop anything but like I don't know I'm inclined to believe them and uh, you'll never guess but poor planning and incompetence is also involved <laughs> You know that one cooking video where I used a dry ingredient measuring cup to measure a liquid and every chef's head exploded? And I did that on purpose, actually, because I'm actually a little bit of an amateur chef and I knew that. That's me with event planning. Okay, that's that's me. I have planned, been to, or helped add probably two or three hundred large events. So if you missed the banner restricted announcement, go check that out. That's huge news. People are still reacting to it. Uh, the general sentiment, if I were to summarize it, is it didn't go far enough, and uh, a lot of players of a lot of formats are still pissed. People are really happy with like what was banned. I don't think anybody was saying, oh no, I need that card. If you're in a Cascade deck, like you don't admit it. You don't admit it in public. That's, no. 
If there's another side to that argument, they ain't talking, okay? Uh, they just released the MTG Arena announcements for this week, and uh, it contains nothing noteworthy or of value. Um, like, for example, Alchemy Karlov Manor is out. Whoa, ho, 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 sign me up. Oh, the next play-in qualifier is Alchemy, so you can continue to uh, ignore that. Oh, uh, MKM Quick Draft starting March 19th, though. Let's go. It's only going to be out for like three days. Oh, I'm streaming the hell out of that. I have found ways to break that, that let's just say it's a good thing they started rigging the matchmaking or I'd win every damn match. So that's it for the magic news, but it's certainly some crazy stuff. So hey, like and subscribe if you want more, and I'll see you guys next time.